everyone today we will be discussing about an ideal bore system so we know that generally uh, as the temperature decreases the density increases and the wave packets which are uh, the atoms in a gas they begin to uh, overlap each other such that lambda 0 is equal to h by p0 where p is the momentum so for a gas at in equilibrium at temperature t p0 by 2 and that is the kinetic energy is equal to 3 by 2 kt such that lambda de broglie wavelength is equal to h by rho 3 mkt this is a very significant relationship because lambda is inversely proportional to t again we know the average volume available to a particle is v by n total volume divided by the number of particles such that r is proportional to n raised to 1 by 3 which is the number density so uh, for a system to be in classical regime lambda should be less than r then then the particles are distinguishable now for lambda to be less than t uh, if lambda is less then t should be more and that is n uh, lambda cube less than less than 1 corresponds to the classical regime suppose if t is less that is if temperature is less then lambda is much greater and n lambda q is equal to 1 and greater so which corresponds to the quantum effects so in quantum effects what happens is that this lambda cube is uh is is higher if this is higher means t is less now moving forward we will uh, discuss about the thermodynamic behavior of an ideal bohs gas we know pv by kt is equal to ln q where q is the a grand canonical partition function which can also be written as ln 1 minus z e raised to minus beta e where beta is equal to 1 by kt and z is the fugacity of a gas now we know the uh, occupation number was given by which have we had discussed in the previous classes was 1 by z inverse e raised to beta minus 1 for a bohs system and we know z is equal to exponential mu by kt where mu is the chemical potential now for large v the spectrum of single particle energies is continuous hence what happens instead of summation it is uh, uh, it is uh, good to use in uh, integration that is summation may be replaced by integration when you do the integration over when you do the integration you need to multiply it by the density of states some books density of states is given by ge de here we have written ae de which will be given by this expression uh, 2m v by h cube 2m raised to 3 by 2 e raised to minus half d he and how do we arrive at this let us see we know uh, d, d d 3 q d 3 uh, p that is the phase space d omega here d3 q is the uh, volume space which is taken as v and d3 p can be written as we talk about a spherical shell 4 pi p uh, 4 pi p square dp again what is p p is uh, p square by 2 m is equal to e so uh, we write this as when you substitute it p square by 2 m is equal to uh, uh, p is equal to root 2 m e and dp is equal to the corresponding uh, differential then you will get this expression this uh, density of states expression Now substituting here in substituting density of expression for n, we get this expression. N is equal to minus 2 mv by h cube 2 m raised to 3 by 2 epsilon raised to half d z inverse e beta e minus 1. From these equations, equation 4 and 5, we realize that at epsilon is equal to 0, the integrals give zero values, zero weight to the energy level e is equal to 0. So when the epsilon value is zero this uh, integration uh, doesn't uh, have any much meaning so what you should do which is wrong quantum mechanically you know, we, we know that because already quantum mechanically that why we cannot give zero weight so to solve this anomaly uh, we use equation 1 and 2 for epsilon is equal to zero and integration for all other terms so that means for epsilon 1 uh, for epsilon 0 we will use integration Uh, sorry we will use summation and for all other terms we will use integration so our new expressions will become like this p by kt minus 2b by h cube uh, that v v has been cancelled here so we am raised to 3 by 2 uh, epsilon half uh, ln 1 minus z e minus beta d e minus 1 by v ln 1 minus z but the second terms come second term comes from here see here the second term we will take this this one that is sum for uh, uh, summation epsilon is equal to 0 only so when you do epsilon is equal to 0 you will get only one term that is 
ln 1 minus z e minus beta e. Same is the case for n. Uh, and uh, we are having, as I have told you, we are having a PVKT. So, what will happen? happen in this case the v will be uh, cancelled and here it will be 1 by v ln 1 minus z because e raised to minus beta e uh, when uh, epsilon uh, e raised to minus uh, beta epsilon when epsilon is equal to 0 is 1 so you will get 1 minus z look here this term when goes to 0 you will get only 1 minus z but still that the whole term doesn't get 0 that is the reason why we are using summation whereas if you had used integration the whole term would have gone to 0 which is not recommended Similar is the case for n also. We will take the integration term. In integration term also we are, we are writing 0 to 8. So the because that 0 is not contributing anything but it looks good when we, when we are using it for applying definite integrals we are keeping this 0 to 8. Otherwise technically it should be 1 to 8 because we are starting from 1 for integration but when you write like this then um, mathematically it is more convenient and secondly 0 is not contributing to the integration term. So, therefore, to get the contribution 0, we are using the summation terms. So, at uh, epsilon is equal to 0, the integral part of the equation 6 will not contribute that we have discussed till now. So, again, n0 will become, uh, n0 will become n0 occupation number is z by 1 minus z. Look here, this term will not contribute at epsilon is equal to 0. So, 1 by v z l minus z again n by v so n0 this n by v is n0 so v v cancelled and you get this number now moving further what is n0 this is n0 is in number of particles in state epsilon is equal to 0 we you know n0 can take that is occupation number can take any values because they are bosons unlike fermions so a lot of particles can exist in a single state that is even if the state is equal to 0 that is the ground state so, when n0 is equal to 0, z is equal to 0 and when 0 is equal to infinity, z is equal to 1. Now, uh, the, we, uh, we know already that z lies between 0 and 1. So, when z tends to 1, what happens? When z tends to 1 term, z by 1 minus v 1 minus z becomes the dominant term. It becomes the dominant term. See here, see here in the previous case, we and we had, there are two terms in this uh, n by v here this term becomes the dominant term when uh, depending on the value of z when z becomes uh, when z tends to 1 this becomes the dominant term in the fraction of equation 6 so z by v 1 minus z is much larger or n0 is much greater that means what if n0 becomes much larger, that means there are lot of particles in the ground state of the uh, of the system. So, n0 becomes very large that corresponds to accumulation of a large number of particles in a singular, single single state epsilon is equal to 0. It leads to what? Bose-Einstein condition. Epsilon is equal to 0 is the ground state or otherwise known as GS. Now, uh, now what we have realized that uh, as I have told before for 0 less than z less than 1 when z tends to 1 this term is the dominant term which corresponds to the summation term at epsilon is equal to 0. Now moving further, we know z by 1 minus z is equal to n0 or z is equal to n0 by n0 plus 1. That we have done from the previous equations. Now substituting the value of z in equation 5, let us see. We have started with equation 6 and got the value and substitute the value of z in equation, uh, equation 5. This is equation 5. Substitute the value of z. From this expression taking n0 we have derived for z and substitute z here. Let us see what we get. We get this expression minus ln 1 minus z by v is equal to minus ln n0 1 by, n, uh, 1 by n0 plus 1 by v is equal to ln n0 plus 1 by v. Uh, uh, we know v is proportional to n and n0 reaches a maximum value n. Hence, 1 by v ln n0 plus 1 can be of the order of uh, n inverse ln n. This term is negligible and hence dropped from equation 5. Now here, this is the catch of the story. 
look at the second term of equation 5 here substitute for uh, we have derived for z for uh, z substitute that term on getting that term you get it is an order in the range of 1 by n ln so that term we know n is very large hence that term can be neglected okay now uh, once we neglect this term our equation 5 becomes a term in integral only so our equation 5 term becomes integral and there we will uh, beta epsilon we will substitute as x so our term becomes let us substitute for beta and then uh, we get this term p by kt is equal to 2 pi 2 m kt raised to 3 by 2 h cube x half ln and 1 minus z e raised to minus x dx so look here it was epsilon so you have written beta epsilon is equal to x so then d, uh, d epsilon will have that then there will be a beta term which has come out as k so uh, that uh, you can do yourself there is nothing big about it uh, it's not a big deal now uh, this is equal to we know p by kt is equal to 1 by lambda cube g raised to uh, 5 by 2 uh, we will uh, we know this is p by kt is equal to we will write 1 by lambda q g raised to 5 by 2 z. Then again n minus n 0 second term that is the sixth term n minus n 0 by v same substitute uh, beta epsilon is equal to x and you get this term and this term we will write 1 by lambda q g raised to 3 by 2 z. Now what is this d raised to 3 by 2 this is the Bose Einstein function and this Bose Einstein function looks like this that is uh, g gamma z is given g uh, gamma z is given by g mu z sorry g mu z is given by 1 by gamma mu x nu minus 1 z minus 1 e raised to x minus 1. If you look into this term this actually fits the bill because you know uh, uh, x raised to half is 3 by 2 minus 1 so z minus 1 e x minus 1 so th this can be uh, easily written as g raised to 3 by 2 z but what about this term this term doesn't actually look like the general term of Bose Einstein function but we have to make it how do we make it see there are two parts when you do integration by parts for this term you have the term which will survive is a Bose uh, Einstein function so let us see in the integrating equation 8 by parts see integrating equation 8 by parts we will justify how we are getting it again you know lambda is h by 2 pi m kt raised to half so now uh, Integrating this, we know, uh, take this as the uh, first and second functions. First function, second function respectively. So, x3 by 2, x3 by 2 integration 0 to infinity minus x raised to 3 by 2 uh, and this integrate this. Now, here this thing, first term will go to 0. You know the first term will go to 0. Here it will go to 0. When it is infinity, this term will go to 0. The whole term will go to 0. The only this term survives. Now, look at this term take 2 by 3 out this term goes uh, this term looks like a uh, beta term uh, sorry a Bose Einstein term see uh, this term on dividing z both sides you will get this term as a bit, uh, Bose Einstein function that is 1 by gamma nu x nu minus 1 z inverse e x minus 1 so gamma nu how you will justify c uh, minus 2 by 3 uh, x 3 by 2 is actually gamma 5 by 2 z inverse e x 2 minus 1 so you divide and because uh, the gamma is in the denominator now here it will come in the numerator and this is the g 5 by 2 z term so finally our gamma 5 by 2 we know uh, gamma n plus 1 is n gamma n and again gamma half is root pi so now here gamma 5 by 2 is 3 by 2 gamma 3 half and what is gamma 3 by 2 again you split so finally you will get this expression half root pi g 5 by 2 z so it is minus 5 by 2 g 5 by 2 z when you substitute here again with respect to lambda and all other things this comes out to be 1 by 3 g raised to 5 by 2 which is the Bose Einstein function this is the uh, profound relationship in this chapter because we are talking about ideal Bose uh, system so we must know the Bose Einstein function so have, we have uh, reduced our ideal gas equation and the number of particles in these functions so finally uh, these two, uh, this integration uh, by parts justifies our equation 8. So, uh, uh, so finally, what happens that 
uh, our p by k t becomes lambda 1 by lambda cube g raised to 5 by 2 z and n minus n 0 by y is 1 by lambda cube g raised to 3 by 2 z. Again from our knowledge uh, we know u is equal to minus uh, dou by dou beta ln q where q is the grand canonical partition function is again pv by kt substituting we know beta is 1 by kt so again differentiating finally you will get this term and this term is this nothing but this so pv kt so kt square v g 5 by 2 z d by dt of lambda cube again we know what is uh, lambda cube how it comes finally you get an expression like this 3 by 2 kt v uh, by lambda cube g 5 by 2 z so what is this we know this is pv so this is finally p becomes 2 by 3 u by v now this also we have derived when we were discussing about our thermodynamic relations and partition functions that is pressure is equal to 2 by 3 u by v which we have got from the Bose um, again uh, substituting in Bose-Einstein functions also so that's it thank you